What is a resistance decade box and why do you need one? A resistance decade box is a tool used for selecting values on the fly. These are used for prototyping, troubleshooting, fine tuning audio equipment, and so much more. Since I'm currently hyper fixated on making guitar pedals, I thought it would be handy to have a couple of these hanging around. That wasn't until I saw they were like $70 a unit. So I thought to myself, can't we just make one of those? And we can, and it's super cheap, so let's get started. Building one of these is relatively straightforward. Essentially, it's just a bunch of switches and resistors wired together. The resistors get placed and soldered in series, which basically means a line. And switches are added with two more pieces of wire to allow the electricity to either bypass the resistor or be forced to go through it. Electricity likes to take the path of least resistance, so when the switch is flipped to connect the wires bypassing the resistor, it takes that path. So for step one, we will get all of our resistors placed. The best part of a decade box is that you only need four resistors for each factor of 10, meaning one, two, three, four, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. With those values, you can choose whatever resistance you want. Since I'm not an electrical engineer, my pedal modding and building comes down to just swapping things out until I hear what I like. <laughs> I realized having multiple of these would probably be beneficial so that I can manipulate multiple areas of a circuit at once rather than having to move one decade box around. And while there are cheaper models of decade boxes online, I would still be looking at a couple hundred dollars to have a few of these laying around. So I'm hoping this works out and performs well against our $70 unit. I didn't have any resistors in the four family, meaning four, 40, 400, etc. So I just doubled up on my twos. A cool thing about resistors is if you don't have a value you need laying around, you can just tie two together that when added equals said value. Here, I just tied two 200 ohm resistors together and that equals 400 and I'm set. And I repeat that for the entire four row. If I was making this and I was in a rush or just trying to do it fast, I'd probably do it with the resistors a little further apart. I think that would give me a little more wiggle room in the future when I'm adding more wires and my switches. If you do have to wrap some resistors together, make sure you solder them so that those connections don't come loose later on. I try to get solder as close to the resistors as possible so that I can trim more of the excess wire off later. With that done, it's time to get these resistors soldered to the board. I'm using some helping hands to hold my project off the table. If you're new to soldering, this is definitely a tool I wish I'd gotten sooner. I had one of those small, rigid, adjustable models for a while, and while it helped, the flexible arms have been a game changer. Now all that's left for step one is to solder your resistors into place, and then cut your ends. In an effort to use less wire, I saved all of the ends of the resistors I had cut off. I'm going to use these later for wiring up my switches. To hold my switches in place and to let myself know where my next set of wires are going, I bend the bottom two leads one direction and the top in the opposite. Now I have a visual reminder of where my next set of wires will be going. And now it's time to solder. With the switches all in place, it's time to get them wired into the circuit. This was definitely the most tedious part of the project. With how little space I gave myself, I was working with some really tight bins. I could have done this faster, but I still wanted it to look pretty, so I stayed the course. And after a couple hours, we ended up with this. It's looking pretty clean if I say so myself. And so next we just have to get everything wired into series. Series wiring is when electrical components like resistors are connected one after another in a single path. So all that's left to do now is add some jumper cables connecting each column of resistors together. With 
the final jumper cables placed, I went ahead and soldered everything together and added some attachment points for my probes. And with that, our DIY Decade Box was complete. But now, let's see how it compares to our $70 one. $5 DIY model or $70 model, you let me know. For my needs, I think the DIY model will be perfect. If you think that you would need the $70 model, let me know down below why, so that I'm educated on this. I feel like I always learn something new in the comments, so thank you. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want, and no worries if you don't. Bye!